Hey HRV fam, last week we worked on anchoring in the physiology of success. This week we're focusing on developing interoception. Interoception. It's the ability to sense or detect occurrences happening within our body. Uh, we'll work on the ability to know our own heart rate and the heart rate of others to increase connection, support, and our abilities for communicating with people in general. We can use our HRV skill set to develop more empathy, make better decisions, and to strengthen our relationships. Dr. Lagos, who's the author of Heart, Mind, and Body, which this series is based off of, is a pioneer in much of the HRV biofeedback training and clinical research. She shares an interesting anecdote about a time where she hooked an energy healer up to a biofeedback device and had that healer visualize herself healing a client. As she did, within seconds the device detected, the healer went into resident state. Um, there's just so much to learn about HRV and what it can enable us to do. I had a similar experience while I was practicing Tai Chi. It's one of the most misunderstood martial arts, uh, at least in my opinion. I think a lot of people have trouble seeing uh, Tai Chi being combat effective or useful in dangerous situations. But my experience is that it's a form of HRV training. Arguably one of the main goals we have in HRV training is developing resonance on command. So while practicing Tai Chi, I really developed a sense of resonance with the bar, uh, sorry, the breath, heart, and body through the movements. I remember enjoying a movement embodied by grace, joy, and of course flow. Flow in the mind, body, and vice versa. The body is a wonderfully powerful tool once you really embrace it for all it can do. And as I mentioned earlier, this week we will be focusing on interoception, where you'll be training by guessing your heart rate through different scenarios, and if you have a partner working with you, you get to guess theirs as well. Numerous studies have shown that people who are more easily and accurately able to guess someone else's heart rate um, are more empathetic. So developing empathy is obviously a great key in connecting and communicating with somebody else and for strengthening the relationships we have with others. There's actually also a really interesting study that showed increased interoceptive ability is correlated with better judgment, shown by the uh, profits of the high frequency traders in that study. Uh, you're gonna continue this week to, to do your two 20 minute sessions while saving just the last five minutes for developing your interoceptive abilities, either on your own or with a partner. First exercise is to sit quietly and set a timer on your phone for 30 seconds. Set the timer and while just breathing at a normal pace, try to count how many times your heart beats per second. Don't try to feel your pulse, but really just tune into your heart and feel the beating. After 30 seconds is over, write down your number of beats and double it. This is your estimated heart rate. Next, try taking your pulse by putting the number of beats on your wrist or neck for the same 30 seconds and then double it. Write it down. How close was your estimate to... Sit down and set the timer for 30 seconds again as you estimate your heart rate. Double that number and write it down. Try increasing your heart rate with the same activity for 30 seconds and check against your pulse for another 30 seconds to compare against your estimate. Next, try resonance breathing for two minutes and try to guess your heart rate after. Can you guess it to within 10 beats or even five beats? I know that the more you practice it, the better you're going to become. So just try guessing it while waiting in line, being placed on hold or sitting. Now, if you have a partner to do this with, I highly recommend it with a partner because you can develop even better connection to your partner. So just try sitting across from one another while holding hands or trying to guess each other's heart rate and checking against the guests. Then try being, having one person leave the room, raise the heart rate for 30 seconds and returning to sit across from you and hold hands while you try to guess their heart rate for 30 seconds. Finally, have them try resonance breathing for two minutes and guess their heart rate after. How close can you get to their heart rate? Is it within 10 beats or even five beats? It's actually really fun. So try to alternate and have fun with it. This heart produces a magnetic frequency that can be detected by sensors many feet away. So people can feel it as well. Activating resonance through breathing opens those around us to a more open, receptive, and less defensive state for communication and collaboration. With enough practice, your heart rates can sink, leading to an increased closeness and interconnectedness, which is going to lead to less intense arguments or arguing in general. There's a lot of data to support by taking a 20 minute break if you're in an argument that raises your heart rate above 100 beats per minute. Because at over 100 beats per minute, your heart is signaling as a fight or flight, and that's going to shut down by mere attention, critical thinking, makes it really hard to be supportive.
study by the psychologist Peter Levine, who watched deer shake their bodies out of sympathetic dominance. Some keys to facilitate a sense of safety and to help shift people into a state of sympathetic, or sorry, out of a state of sympathetic dominance is to look into their eyes and show expression on your face, especially the upper half of your face is gonna help calm down their nervous system. So the brows, the eye contact, allow yourself to speak in a slower, softer, higher pitch with variations in tone and pitch. And then touching the other person, holding hands with moderate pressure. You want to be like limp and dead, but not so hard that you're squeezing their hand off. And it's just in a way that's reassuring. You can touch their shoulder or their hands. You know, interestingly, HRV practice has been shown to help with sex for men and for women.